it's a it's a case that just seems to stick with you, you know, the John Bonet Ramsey case. Oh, absolutely. Like three decades later, and it's like yeah. we still can't shake this feeling. Like there's something. It's haunting. Yeah. It really is. Just tragic. Six years old. A beauty queen. The ransom note. I mean, come on. And then all the speculation about her family. It's just. It's a lot. It's a lot to unpack, and that's exactly what we're going to do in this deep dive. I'm ready. We're really going to dig into some of the latest developments, especially what John Bonet's father, John Ramsey, has been saying recently. Yeah, he's been making some pretty shocking claims. Right. Like the fact that there might be untested DNA evidence. Did you hear about this? I did. That's the thing about this case. Even after all these years, there's always something new coming to light. It's wild. But yeah, he's saying the DNA on the grout, you know, the thing they used to strangle her. Right, right. He says that was never analyzed. See, that's what I mean. That sends chills down your spine. If that's true, how, you know, like... It's a huge deal. It's massive. I yeah. mean, DNA evidence is everything these days. It's how we solve so many cases. Right, like, did they just miss that? You have to wonder if that wasn't looked at, what else was missed in the initial investigation? Exactly. I mean, if they didn't test something that crucial... right. It makes you question everything. Well, and we have to acknowledge the Boulder PD, they put out a statement. They couldn't really comment on what John Ramsey's saying yeah. because it's still an open investigation, supposedly. Oh, right. Of course. So maybe they did test it and they just aren't saying, you know. OK, so maybe or maybe there have been new developments that they just can't talk about yet. Exactly. We're in the dark a little bit here. So frustrating. But OK, let's say for a second that there is testable DNA on that garrote. What could that mean now? After 27 years, I mean, is it even possible? Honestly, even after all this time, it could change everything. The technology we have now, it's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Even from a tiny sample, they could potentially get a match or at least rule some people out. Wow. Things like uh, familial DNA searching. They could compare it to public databases, see if there are any relatives, any connections. Oh, wow. Didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, yeah. Or even, uh, what is it, touch DNA. Like, even the tiniest trace amounts, they can get something from that now. It's incredible. That's kind of scary, actually. It is. But also amazing, like, the things they can do with forensics these days, it's come a long way. Oh, absolutely. Makes you think about how different things might have been back then, especially with the media frenzy around this case. Remember that? Oh, are you kidding? It was insane. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Do you think all that attention, do you think it helped or hurt the investigation? I mean, what do you think? It's got to be both, right? Like, on the one hand, it keeps the case alive. People are looking. Maybe they find something they wouldn't have. But the pressure. Intense. Must have been so much pressure on those investigators. And you know it can lead to mistakes. Yeah. Tunnel vision. Oh, totally. And what about the family? I mean, can you imagine? It's easy to forget there are real people at the center of all this. Uh. The cameras, the speculation. The constant scrutiny. Awful. It's a lot to deal with on top of, you know, already unimaginable grief. Speaking of which, we have to talk about what happened with Burke, John Benet's brother. Oh, you mean with Dr. Werner Spitz? Yeah. Spitz, he's a big time forensic pathologist, right? Right. He actually went on CBS like a whole special about the case and accused Burke of killing his sister. I remember that. It was crazy. And Burke sued him for defamation. And rightfully so, in my opinion. I think so, too. It's just you can't just go around accusing people, especially a kid, without any real proof. It was a landmark case, actually. Yeah. And it really showed how damaging those kinds of accusations can be. I mean, Dr. Spitz, he's entitled to his opinion, of course. But to say that publicly with no real evidence. Yeah, that's just irresponsible. It was settled out of court, I think, in 2019. It did, yeah. Which really tells you something. It does. At the end of the day, we can't forget that these are real people's lives we're talking about. It's a good reminder for all of us, honestly, to think before you speak, you know? Because words have power, even when we're talking about something that happened a long time ago, like this case. You're absolutely right. It's so easy to get caught up in the true crime aspect and forget that. Totally. It's all public perception versus, like, what can actually be proven, you know? Exactly. The court of public opinion and a court of law, very, very different things. No kidding. So given all this, the DNA, the media, the cloud of suspicion that's always followed the Ramses, I mean, do you think we'll ever really know? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Right. It's like, will we ever have a real answer? Well, Elizabeth Vargas, she did a whole documentary on this, and she said there's a real chance we may never know for sure. Yeah. And, you know, the more time passes. It gets harder. It gets so much harder. Yeah. Memories fade. 
evidence degrades. It's just the nature of these things. So you're saying it could just be a cold case forever? Well, I wouldn't say that necessarily. Remember what we were saying about DNA and how much it's advanced? The Boulder PD mentioned that 750 sample update. Right, right. That's huge. I mean, even after 27 years, they might still find a match. And it's not just DNA, right? There's so many other things they can look at now. Like what? Fibers, fingerprints, yeah. even digital footprints, things that maybe they didn't even think about back then or just couldn't analyze the way they can now. I so like having a whole new set of eyes, right? Yeah, exactly. Looking at the same evidence, but seeing totally different things. And who knows what they might find? It's what makes these cold cases so fascinating, you know? Mm. The past is never really past. Because there's always something new to discover. Always. Yeah. But it also shows just how hard it is trying to solve something like this after so long. Yeah, where do you even begin? I mean, after all this time, it's got to be like, what, starting from scratch? It's a balance. You have to look at the old evidence, the old theories, but with a fresh perspective. And you're constantly thinking about what's possible now that wasn't back then. Like you said, that 750 sample update, that's huge. Hey, so something that maybe was a dead end before. Totally. Yeah. A partial DNA profile that meant nothing years ago, now it could be the key. It's amazing. That's incredible. But still, part of me wonders, even with all that, is there a chance we'll never really know what happened to her? It's possible. Time, it's a cruel mm -hmm. thing. Evidence gets lost, memories get fuzzy. But I think the important thing to remember is that every little thing, every new piece of information, it gets us closer to the truth. Even if it's something small. Especially the small things. Sometimes that one tiny detail, that's all it takes. It change everything. Exactly. And in a case like this, with so many twists and turns, you have to look at everything, every possibility. It's about being meticulous, being persistent. And that's what makes it so fascinating, right? It is. It's the not knowing, the what ifs. It's like a puzzle you can't put down, even if you're missing half the pieces. Totally. But we have to remember this isn't just some puzzle, right? Oh, absolutely not. We can't forget that. This is about a real little girl. A family that lost a daughter, a sister, a community that was rocked by this. And no matter what we find out, that loss, that's always going to be there. It is. And I think that's important to remember as we're going through all of this. It's a good reminder for all of us, I think, yeah. to be sensitive, even as we're trying to figure things out. Exactly. So as we keep talking about this case, about Jean Bonnet, let's keep that in mind, the human element, but also the fact that things change, you know. What we think we know today, it could be totally different tomorrow. Because of some new technology, some new piece of evidence. Exactly. It's a case that just keeps on giving in a way. Keeps us on our toes. For sure. And that's what makes it a good one for a deep dive. It really is. Because even after all this time, the search for truth, for justice, it doesn't stop. It really does, doesn't it? It's like this constant push and pull, wanting those answers so badly, but never really knowing. It's the not knowing that gets you. Every time you think you've got a handle on it, this case, there's another question, another layer. Right. Like it almost feels intentional the way it just pulls you back in. And you see that with everyone, I think. People who are obsessed with this case, people who are actually working on it, even just casually following along, we all want that resolution, that feeling of, okay, now it makes sense. And do we ever get that with a case like this? It makes you wonder, e even if, let's say, they find something, DNA, a witness, whatever, mm. will it be enough? Will it actually answer that bigger question? You mean like why? Exactly. Why her? Why like that? Why then? Sometimes, some cases, I don't know if there's ever a good enough answer. It's true. And that's unsettling, right? For sure. But maybe that's part of it, too. Maybe some mysteries just can't be solved, not completely. And we have to be okay with that. Does that mean we stop looking, though? Never. We keep asking the questions. We keep trying to make sense of it. Because that's all we can do, right? Even when the odds feel stacked against us. I like that. It's like the searching never really ends. It doesn't. And I think for Jean Bonnet, that's what matters keeping her memory alive, not letting her story just fade away. That's beautifully said. And I think that's a good place for us to leave things today. But to our listener, we want to hear from you. What is it about this case that sticks with you? The DNA? The family secrets? Or is there something else, some other detail that you keep coming back to? Let us know. Because every thought, every theory, it all helps in its own way. Until next time, keep diving deep.